we realize that in Indian universities, as far as the nuclear physics is concerned, our research activities are not up to the mark, but that is basically because uh, we inherited a system which was not research oriented. Thereafter, our economy <coughs> was basically based on a socialist pattern. And the industry did not need knowledge creators. They did not need problem solvers. Till 1990, we were basically content in producing process managers. After that, when the economy started expanding, suddenly we realized that we need now people, the industry needs people who are problem solvers, who are knowledge creators, who could do something new. And now, therefore, we are trying to change our system. We are trying to adopt a learning-centric approach. Topic of this conference, even in nuclear physics, most of the universities in India have been concentrating more on theoretical aspects rather than on applied nuclear physics aspects. And with the results, we are lacking in infrastructure as far as the laboratories, etc., in the university is concerned. And also, we have not been able to contribute to the industry per se. I am not saying at all that our research institutes, which are there in the country, they have not contributed. They have rather excelled, and India is amongst the leading nations or amongst the top five or six countries in the world as far as nuclear technology is concerned. But our universities also now need to change there and catch up with that. To that extent, I am happy to say that today in this gathering, we have scientists from Hawa Atomic Research Center, Mumbai. We have scientists from Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai. We have people from Inter-University Accelerator Center, New Delhi. Saha Institute of Nuclear Physics, Kolkata. We have got people from Institute of Physics, Bhubaneswar. We have also from Kolkata, uh, Kolkata uh, scientists coming to join us. And we need their blessings here. We need their guidance so that we can grow and we can take the path that we have set for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. that there is a demand 
the public sectors are not able to meet the needs of the people. <coughs> and this is a good thing to welcome it. But not all universities are good actually. Eventually some of them will succeed, some of them will excel. The public institutions are not able to meet the demands of the for example, there are only there are only seven IITs in the Institute of Technology in the country. They were admitting only as many as say 4,000, 5,000 students every year, and uh, some five to ten lakhs students or you know, 500,000 students were ready to take the examinations. So this leads to a lot of students. And they should do that. Something really needed. This is what will make you different from other sectors. Most of the you know, well known universities or institutions, for example, in the US, they are private universities. They, they are the best in the teaching and research. So, in that context, uh, then I kind of agreed to this. Uh, idea and we started working on this and I told them that we should have 50% uh, of the speakers from abroad and India and that, that is how we can go try to get as many young people as possible because uh, in nuclear physics uh, we are kind of at the crossroads in the country. When I completed my PhD in nuclear physics, my rising is the heart. There were hundreds of PhDs, there were hundreds of faculties in the country. Now we can count them up in years. Luckily, in the last 20, 30, 20 years probably, we have two major experimental facilities coming up in the country. Several new accelerator centers were set up. We have got new detector systems that have been set up. We have new, uh, we have superconducting cyclotrons coming up. And a lot of investment has been made in facilities at New Delhi, at Mumbai, at Kolkata, and uh, a new Indian Nuclear Factory <coughs> will be set up very soon, which is in the process of being set up as well. So, a number of things are happening, and all this requires manpower and uh, trained manpower. So, to meet this need, we need to speed up the process of training, bringing new PhDs into the system, new postdocs, new faculty members. So, to some extent, that is happening, and uh, we are growing now again. At one time, this is what we used to do because we didn't have experimental facilities. All of us we are nuclear theorists. Now we have probably only a dozen of nuclear theorists. Everything is very experimental. And uh, that's one area where we are trying to focus again now and trying to establish some centers, uh, particularly at my place at Rorki and at Kolkata. And we are trying to grow new centers and bring uh, new theories and consistent. And Dr. Kailash has uh, been helping us immensely because he is in the system atomic energy system also and here in the government the Department of Science and Technology there also. So here they always been providing the support to this effort, these efforts. And idea is to have a reasonable, sustainable growth in this area, particularly when many labs in the US and Europe are closing down actually. They are more focusing on more on high energy physics and other areas where we cannot actually compete with them. So I see this as an opportunity to kind of set up a base here where people can, can come from everywhere to do their experiment, to work here. Not only experiment in theory also. So we have high performance companies, universities coming up at many places in the country. They can be accessed from various institutes. Uh, Dedicated lines are being set up. There is a program of National Knowledge Network, NKN, uh, in the country. And uh, 
dedicated uh, high bandwidth fiber optic cables are being laid. So, it should not be difficult for people sitting in remote places to do calculations, to do theoretical work.